Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we saw Ghostbusters Frozen Empire last night. We came, mm -hmm. we saw, and now we're going to kick its ass. We're going <laughs> to... You're going to kick its ass. We're going to... No, we're going to give an honest, fair review, overview of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. And um, we're kind of split on this one. We are. Because, uh, you know, I, I mean... Uh, I kind of expect, I think on some level, I kind of expect this to be split on this one a little bit, but um, I will say right out of the gate that Geeky liked it better than I did. I did um, like it better than you did, yes. And I want to just claim that I didn't hate the movie, I just didn't love the movie. Good news, it's still better than 2016 Ghostbusters. That is true. It was not cringy like, well, it wasn't as cringy as, as, as 2016, but wasn't the proper return to form, for me anyway, to the Ghostbusters that I was hoping for, especially with it being set in New York. And I, uh, yeah. I think, I will talk about spoiler territory later. I'm not gonna do that yet, but I think that the problem with it is something similar to what I saw critics saying, which was it had too many different plot points going on. Like there's, there's some parts of it that really were great. And if they had focused more on that, it would have been a much better movie. But they tried to shoehorn in some other things. That I don't really know if it belonged. And because they tried to put that in there, I think it kind of messed it up. And then the ending felt very rushed. Yeah, so we'll um, we'll talk about it. Now, there are going to be spoilers in this video. So if you haven't seen the movie. Or if you want to see it, don't want to be spoiled. Right, right. Um, you know, you probably want to tune out and then come back after you've seen it. But uh, yeah, we're going to rip the Band-Aid off. We're going to, um, you know, talk about it. And this is, you know... For me, it's kind of heartbreaking because this is this is like the one movie I was looking forward to this year. I was like, oh, finally we get like Afterlife was kind of the the tease for the return to New York with proper mm -hmm. Ghostbusters, and I was like, oh, <sighs> okay. yeah. Well, Afterlife right. was definitely better. Yes, Afterlife was definitely better. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Yeah, woohoo if you do. Woohoo. So we went early yesterday. We went like four o'clock, the four o'clock showing, which apparently preview night now starts at four o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, it starts earlier, depending, you know, Jeez, that's just like a regular day. So we saw it early. Didn't get a chance to do a review last night. Now, I actually did the review for X-Men yesterday and I was like, God, if these movies could be or, you know, both of these could be fantastic updates to things I loved as a kid. This would be one hell of a day. But uh, one was good and one was very mid but i'm gonna let geeky um talk about it first are we gonna do spoilers now i think we'll, we'll just rip the band-aid off so I, spoilers I, away spoilers I, there's no way to talk about it and the problems with the movie without spoiling things right so, so spoilers are coming i'm warning you yeah. now if you don't want to hear spoilers turn it off come back later anyway okay so yeah um i'm not really sure why you want me to start but um well i want you to talk about you why know, i'm saying what i'm saying yeah, good news and bad news. Okay. You're good news. So <laughs> You're good cop, I'm bad cop. <laughs> I like it better than you, but I think we're actually closer than we are farther apart on this one. But um, I think, okay, it starts out really good, like with the past, and they're setting up this premise for this like new bad guy, which the bad guy itself looks more like he was out of the cartoon than he was, you know, from Ghostbusters. It felt like, somebody said it best, I think I read somewhere, a comment to me, they said it felt like Ghostbusters, but like in a different like dimension or something like it's it, it's it feels adjacent but the the bad guy that looked did not look very much like what you'd expect for ghostbusters unless you're talking the cartoon version yeah um the bad guy should have been more focused on what the bad guy was they have this new ghost girl melody okay which was really weird because melody felt like she was shoved in for the whole purpose of the vibe you get is phoebe needs uh you Phoebe, it's not Phoebe's friend. Phoebe seems to have very a strong attachment to this female ghost. Okay. Yeah. Let's. Um. So yeah, I'm just. I'll rip the damn bandaid off. It's. It's. She's. Phoebe's obviously got goo goo eyes for this hot, like literally hot, because she's on fire. She, and she looks like <laughs> she looks like a real person. Like the ghosts in Ghostbusters don't usually look like the like, like no. People. Or they might look like people and then they change into Distorted scary versions, ver like, yeah. you know, but like the librarian. But she always stays very sharp and very, you know, look how pretty I am the whole way through it. Um, just looks like a kid on fire, like yeah, a translucent kid on fit. fire. Yeah. Well, she looks way older than 15 or 16 to me. Um, she doesn't seem to fit, if that makes sense. Like what you Yeah, the, actually that whole, that whole arc shoot didn't, in, shoot in. didn't shoot fit. Shoehorned. Shoehorned in. That's what I'm looking for. Um, 
But yeah, go go on. So anyway, th- 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 there's this whole thing with this Melody. And the whole point is, Melody, of course, when you see her, you're like, oh, she's going to be the bad guy. Well, she's being used by the bad guy, okay? And she's supposed to get to Phoebe. And but she likes Phoebe as like a friend or likes her as whatever. So she doesn't want to do it. But <laughs> they're more than friends. They're, they're, they're more they than friends. They don't actually go all in on it. But because it's like, overseas, why, but they're more than friends. Why would Phoebe want to become a ghost for two minutes just to be in the same form as this girl so they could be close to each other otherwise? I mean, it doesn't make sense. You can still yeah. be friends with somebody you not want to be in the same plane as them, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they have this plot point later, which when we talk about the movie, it, she ends up turning herself into a ghost for two minutes. So And then they use her to trigger the the bad guy or whatever. And the whole point of this melody being there seems like it was shoehorned in and they gave her a couple things to do. And her match at the end is important, too. She carries a matchbook. Apparently she burned her whole family alive by accident. So she carries a matchbook. So... Um, at the end, they that comes in handy again. But she feels like she was just shoehorned in there. Like they they gave her some plot points just to put her in there, but she does not need to be there. Um, that's one of the things. Then they also brought in the Ghost Core, which I, I know they're trying to be more the cartoon, and I get why they're doing it. But it becomes a distraction. Like there's no reason for you know podcast to be there. There's no reason for Sunny to be there, but they're there. You know, they're, they're just using it as like, here's our new ghost tag. You'll be wanting to do the cartoon. Yeah. Um, God. They could have done it better. Let's put it that way. It's just, I, it's just, it's not. And then that yeah. stupid little mini marshmallow. Would you stop with those? They're annoying as fuck. It makes, it makes no sense to have them now that Gozer has been defeated. It makes no sense for them to even be in it. Like it worked in the last one as a gag, like a one-off. Like, oh, it's the big marshmallow man. We have tiny marshmallows. That's funny. Whatever. We moved on. No. Um, that's, that's actually my, my biggest complaint with the movie is that there are too many damn people in the movie. I think that's it. I mean, um, I think I get why they wanted to put it in. And I think it, it does work. And the fact that they should definitely have it in there. And I think having their head scientist in there and then some of the little ghost characters and stuff they have in there could actually work within the movie. And I think that that's not all bad, but I think that they, they weighed it down. They bogged it down too much. If that it, makes sense. Yeah. I, I, I feel like, I feel like half the cast from afterlife they're there because of contractual obligation, because it, makes no damn again makes no damn sense for podcast to be there it makes no damn sense for the mom even to be there and it makes no damn sense for what's her name lucky whatever the girlfriend is like she's just i have left feel like they're it how they enter like oh yeah i just happen to be interning in new york oh i just happen to be in new york too we just all these people from oklahoma just happen to be in new york at the same time right and then, like you that's know- Freaking why, stupid. Why are they living in the firehouse? I mean, the that, family... that makes, okay, that pissed me off. Actually, I'll tell you why it pissed me off. Because they make. Well, it, they're Ghostbusters, so that's why they're living in the firehouse. They're but not yeah. Ghostbusters. They're not Ghostbusters. They, they fell are. into it. That doesn't matter. It's, Mr. Gooberson's not a Ghostbuster. Their mom is not a Ghostbuster. She, they are now. No, they're not. <laughs> As I said, they didn't, they didn't earn it. What happened? They basically, they got they got it because they're e- Egon's relatives. I'm like, well, it doesn't mean they know what the fuck they're doing. The other Ghostbusters were scientists. Gruberson's well, a, they make a point of him and her being scientists. Yeah, and basically, but Trevor like real, and mom are real like scientists. There. But um, Trevor's just there basically to be Slimer's sidekick. But um, that's brings me to the other part. It seems like it's an awful lot of family drama shit. Yes. And I think, Thank you. And I think the family drama tied up with the melody, which didn't need to be there. And then the they're so, spending so much time on this other stuff that they didn't really spend time on things that they could have set up to be better. Thank God Pat Oswald wasn't in it that much. He was not in it. Because um, yeah, I can't stand Pat Oswald. Like, but even his character, I think, fit better and felt more like it should be there yes. over some of the other things in the movie. Yes. That being said, I still liked it because when it when it was Ghostbusters, it was good. Um it, I think that the whole idea of this villain, I don't like, I think the villain doesn't look like it fits, but the idea behind it was very interesting. I like the fact they brought in other, another culture into it. And I really love the, the fire master guy. He was the, he was, <laughs> he was I, like the, 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 uh, Tully guy in this one. Yeah. Um, so they have the guy, I, I forget his name. Uh, the character was, I think Nadim, but I forget his name, but the guy from Eternals, the Indian guy, he's in, he's in a bunch of commercials now or whatever comedian. God, I forget his name. Anyway, he, he actually was pretty funny. Now it's kind of like, it's weird because he's basically a firebender from avatar, uh, which kind of sort of get, I don't know, uh, but it's weird, but I would have actually preferred to have him just be 
a Ghostbuster, like just bring this guy because he's funny. He's legitimately funny. Like just make this guy just what I would have preferred to have had happen. This is me playing armchair director. You keep the two kids, you bring them to New York to visit the firehouse. They get involved in shenanigans with adult Ghostbusters. Um, I'm not talking just all the old cast. I'm saying maybe have Ray and then maybe a couple of new people, but it doesn't make any damn sense for them to be handed the keys to the firehouse, which has the freaking containment unit. Oh, they're supposed to be watching over. They're the, watching over the containment unit. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Well, they even said like, they even said it's a last defense between the, the they didn't have like, so you give you it put, to some random family? Like, well, oh. No, because hey. it, it's it's his family. Well, know? it doesn't matter. Just, it's Egon's just, family. It's, Egon knew what the fuck he was doing. Ray knows more about the shit. Winston knows more about the shit. Venkman probably knows more about the shit than these people do. They just like showed up they just happen to get caught up in this and we're going to give them the firehouse and help have them watch over the containment unit. And then you're telling me Winston has got all this money and he's building all his ghost tech at this other facility, but they can't even fix the fucking Ecto-1. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like they give him a bunch of hand-me-down shit and then he's off doing. So what would have made more sense to me would be like Winston was actually putting together a new proper Ghostbuster team. They're actually working out of the firehouse. Then you bring the two kids up and you get them involved in it somehow. And you leave everybody else in Oklahoma where they belong because there's no fucking reason for them to be in family New York. Family drama. Yeah, family um, drama. Now, my, my complaints with it isn't even like with the old Ghostbusters. I have very little complaint with that, with the parts with them. I, oh, they actually, were great. Yeah. It actually made sense for the I mean, other than Winston. He was a little bit like, I think our daughter said he wasn't, she loves Winston, but he Winston wasn't Winston in this one as much as he usually is, which I don't disagree. Money changes people. Apparently. <laughs> That's what happened. Um, but, you know, the old cast was was great. Um, I, I I just think it was too bogged down with too many people and then too much family drama because it definitely took away from the story of they have this really cool story of this for this villain yes and then they have this really they, but you don't even get to elaborate on and honestly then they use that story to make this for this melody ghost which feels like it was just you know changed to fit her they weren't even it. connected in any way because they look like, okay well, it looked like they were setting up okay if you've seen that then you're watching this you know what we're talking about so they go see the wax they, re, they hear the wax cylinder right and that's the recording that set this thing off because it had a human voice saying that the the, the chant or whatever it needed to be done so that makes sense to bring it back. And and I think podcast was recording it at the time because you're like, how yeah. this happened? So they had a way to accidentally trigger this. And yeah, give him something a, to do. Right. But actually yeah. they made a point of showing they had the cylinder and they could do that. Right. But then suddenly the cylinder gets broken and now they have to use Phoebe with this ghost that they feels like it's been shoved in there for whatever reason. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I'm going to rip the band aid off right now. They basically, I think. And they might have done it to shut up the Ghostbusters 2016 people. Phoebe's obviously queer, right? They gave her a whole, and it took up a third well, of the never, movie. They never specify. It comes for across For international that way. audiences, but she's obviously got goo goo eyes for this. Why else would you want to be in the same plane to physically be connect when you're just a friend with somebody? Yeah, if she wanted a bestie, she already had podcast, right? Well, not just that, because you wouldn't you wouldn't let yourself be a ghost. And then they're saying, oh, they covered that too. Well, I just want to know what it feels like. I want to know what it's like to be a ghost. And they just happen to have this new location. This happens to have this machine that just happens to take possessed items and take the ghost part out of it. Usually, it sucks it and puts it in a containment. For some reason, she gets gets to sit. It made no sense. It was like and how like she know all one this? Way, and then they changed it last minute for this other way. I don't know. But they, they shoehorned in this whole, like, uh, gay teen romance plot, and it becomes like, okay, so what this felt like is... They never actually say that, though. They never, they never say, say it, but they're it dancing is. around just the clarify. issue because they're already like, well, they're, we got... could be friends, too, but it just reads it, one way. For international audiences, right? right? I'm telling you, this is all about for international audiences, but it's very obvious where they're going with it. But that being said, I don't watch Ghostbusters for teen drama or and romance. Or family drama. Or even family drama. Um, what this feels like is that they started a Ghostbusters streaming show, and this was the very special episode of the Ghostbusters streaming show. And it kind of doesn't fit with the rest of the show where they're actually busting ghosts and the busting ghost gets the ghost busting gets relegated to the back burner for all this family drama shit. We did the family drama in afterlife yeah. and it made sense given the context of the movie and you did your Spielberg thing with that and the, the, having the kids and all that because podcast was basically data and we, we get that. We get that. Okay. That was fine. It worked for what it was. You don't need those kids 
to come to New York. All you need are the two Spengler kids and you, even Paul Rudd, like maybe, I don't know, keep Paul Rudd maybe, but I'm like, you definitely didn't need the mom. You definitely didn't need the girlfriend. You didn't need podcasts. Maybe she could Skype them or something because they didn't bring anything to the plot. So you, you, you create a new Ghostbuster team with Winston's money. You have Ray over see him or work with him or whatever. You cut down on the bloat and you spend more time busting ghosts. People want to see adult Ghostbusters busting ghosts in New York. Yeah, I think even the Ghost Corps is actually makes, you know, if, as long as they like, took some of the parts out of it, would completely make sense. Except for the fact that our kids brought up, if their containment unit is failing at the firehouse and they have a brand new one they've been working on all this time and it can fit a lot more into it, why was it never told, no told to No fucking them? sense. They just like gave them the hammy, but they're also like, yeah, you just happen to have 40 years worth of ghosts. And we had a huge disaster back in the eighties, but yeah, these morons from Oklahoma, just give them the keys to the firehouse, which I thought was a Starbucks, by the way, they said in the last one, it was a Starbucks, but yeah, we're just going to let them just, you know, piss around with the Ecto one and play Ghostbuster while we do the real ghost work. You know what I'm saying? Like that makes no fucking sense it whatsoever doesn't. they would bring them to the ghost corn training them there you know yeah it doesn't make but it's like they, it's like they couldn't decide which way they, way they wanted to go so they did them both so i'm like okay so you've got finn wolfhard who's a pretty big name now with stranger things you do nothing with him you could have had him training but you bring the girlfriend in for no damn reason like leave her ass in oklahoma she didn't need to be in this movie you know what I'm saying? She didn't do anything anyway. None of these, like half of well, the characters. She's the only not white female. So, well, I'm just saying. You, then you get another not white female. If that you got to have one for your quotas or whatever, you get that's an adult that's funny. And like I said, those kids were fine in that movie. That was like a Spielberg esque movie. But this, they're trying to serve two masters. They're trying to make it both that movie, a sequel to that movie, and also. Um, make it feel more like Ghostbusters by having it take place in New York. And it's like, you're going to have to pick one or the other. I think you could have Afterlife be kind of like a spinoff one-off that introduces the Spengler kids and, you know, gives us closure for Egon. And then you move in, which is what I thought they were going to do. Then you move back into more traditional Ghostbuster stuff. Now, the positives about it was... <laughs> Sorry. Because yeah. he really... Is mad. I mean, I, I'm not... This, was, this wasn't PR. that... Um, I wanted this movie to be good. I really did. And I, it, it's not the worst thing ever, but I'm like, it just, it, for me, it just, it was trying to serve too many masters. Well, I, think. I also think too, at the end, it, the end felt rushed and that's what, now, I mean, to be fair, yeah. other Ghostbusters movies, it kind of does, it does feel rushed at the end as well. Um, but in this one, it was like, you get basically bits of backstory about the guy, the, the bad guy, the, the big thing you see in the, in the trailer was like everything getting frozen. doesn't even happen to the end of the movie. Okay. Um, he doesn't get let out of the prison or until like the end of the movie. And it's just about what, Oh, what supposedly this person did before. And they do it all with their via animation and stuff. Kind of like this animated. That didn't fit. Either. It didn't. And I mean, instead of just, like actually showing what he did, cause that probably cost more money. Yeah. Um, but you set up this really cool thing in the past with this adventurous society, and then you have Patton Oswalt talking about how they're a bunch of rich people, blah blah blah. And I just thought that was oh, funny. Oh yeah, Patton they're Oswald stealing artifacts and farts. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. even then, his character still fit in the movie better than other people's. Uh, and they could have done a lot more with the bad guy, and they could have done a lot more with the the person that becomes a firebender because at the end, or fire master, I'm sorry, at the no, end, it's a firebender. He it is what it is. He's he doesn't a fire have powers at all, and then suddenly no. he's able to like last minute pull it out and save everyone. Um, between him and Phoebe, like Bankman. but Phoebe makes sense though. She she figured out brass. They kept containing it in brass. And by like taking part of the fire pole and, and melting it down, and, and she had the old power pack hidden that wasn't confiscated. And by taking that and then dipping part of it into the brass, she could use brass to help fight it because it was it was immune to their regular proton blasts. So that was actually good and smart and that was useful. Yeah, but it was um, that was whole, that was weird too. The whole thing with Phoebe beyond the whole like the whole plot is basically because they don't treat her like a proper Ghostbuster. But I'm like. Bitch, please. She's the one who did all the ghost busting in the last movie. Yeah, that didn't make sense. They weren't. Well, no, that was because <sighs> she was benched because she's doing her like I'm a bell at your belling and not listening to you now and getting herself into trouble. And then because the mayor, who's Peck now, yeah. um, wanted her benched. So they had to bench her because he was threatening them. But still, it's just like and like the mom gets the bus ghost like she's she, the one good line. I love that Phoebe was like, you know. Basically, if you weren't a Spengler, you'd be answering the phones for us here because you're dumb. Well, that was, yeah. That was, <laughs> that's really ba- that was like, but that, that's true. Like, her mom is 
not you know, Ghostbuster material. I mean, it sounds like I, I didn't like it, and that's not true. I mean, we we're just talking about the the problems we felt with it, why we think that it might it could have how it could have improved. Okay, I don't think it was as bad as you do. Um, I would watch it again. For me, that's saying that's a compliment because if I don't like something, I will never watch it again. I would watch it again. Um, I actually don't hate it as much as you. It's definitely better than 2016. I yeah, think it's better I, than Ghostbusters. It might be better than Ghostbusters 2, in my opinion. No, I don't think it's better than Ghostbusters 2. That's because my that's opinion. Because that's another one though. that kind of had a bunch of... But even then, the villain was still the more pr- pr- pronounced throughout the movie. The villain, you actually... There was a straight line from, like, the villain was introduced in the beginning, and it made sense. And this... This this one, it was like all over the place. The it's villain a meandering mess sometimes. It was a meandering mess, and the villain shows up and barely gets to do anything, and then gets gets off. Defeat it quickly, very quickly. Yeah. And like I said, if you spent half as much time making the villain a mystery and a threat as you did having Phoebe make goo goo eyes at the fire girl. I mean, they did the same thing with Gozer in the first one, where like it wasn't until the end Gozer appeared, but it was like... Yeah, was but there was all this build-up. But there was, you know? and it was like, you know, they, they were trying to do the same thing. Like, I can see what they were trying to do, and I think it would have worked if they didn't have all this other bloat that wasn't necessary, and they focused more on that story, and they had, like you said, a direct line. Here's the main story, but you don't know what the main, is the main story. This is the main story. The family issues is the main story, you know? The yeah. new Ghost Corps, what, what's the main story, you know? I, and I think they're trying... They're they're. Doing, they're pulling a DC and they're trying to, because they have this whole, like, in their minds, this whole Ghostbusters cinematic universe. And they're trying to lay the groundwork and they want Ghost Core to be like the Ghostbuster Avengers. And um, we probably, you know, if this movie does well, which I don't know how it's going to do, honestly, there weren't a whole lot of people there and we were there. But, like, then I could see them doing other movies with more adult teams. But I don't know. I just think they were trying, again, they were trying to serve too many too many masters. Yeah. When it was over, our son's like, well, we still have two good Ghostbusters movies. <laughs> I actually didn't hate it as much. Like our kid, my our, the kids line up with their dad. They they both were like, eh. Um, I'm the odd one out because I didn't. Ha- I don't. I'm not saying it's the best movie ever. It's not Ghostbusters. I mean, the first. Oh, movie. nothing is good. Not no. even Ghost. Nothing's nothing Ghostbusters. Nothing's going to compare to the first movie. I mean, that was lightning. Afterlife was no, definitely better but, than this as well. Yes. Um, but. It isn't it's not 2016 and maybe that maybe my bar was low i don't know i i would watch it again i didn't hate everything about it i do feel like there are missteps i think that melody had no there was no reason for her a really third wasn't. of the movie was about melody and phoebe and it did and not seem it did it really fell out of place it I was mean, like ghost core thing felt more, yeah, yeah <laughs> like, ghost core thing felt more in place i mean obviously because that was like the cartoon right but it feels like they're trying to do ghostbusters movie and put the ghostbusters cartoon into one and sometimes it works and sometimes i don't think it works as well as it could have and there's just little things they could have tweaked to make it work better but that's just me uh what would you rate it i give 10. it five see i would say six and a half yeah i so i definitely like it better than you but i still don't think it's the best thing ever maybe maybe seven maybe but then for me 2016 is like a two uh, yeah, yeah 2016 kind. i'd give it two or three two i i don't know um ghostbusters two for me is like a five or six <sighs> I, I think I can appreciate, and that's the thing too. Like I can appreciate because I, I did watch the real Ghostbusters animated series back in the day. I you can see what action. they're trying to do. See what they're trying to do, and I would love that. And you know, I know you guys didn't like the villain design, but I'm like, no, this looks like a, a I, villain from the animated series. I agree, it looks like the animated show. I agree with you. I just don't think it fits in the the movie version. I think you needed to work your way into that, and I yeah. think you need to do that with another adult team of Ghostbusters. And what's weird about this too is. You know, they never mentioned Ghostbusters 2 in Afterlife and the Ecto-1 still had the original logo on it and stuff. And they were still wearing the uniforms from the 84 movie. This one, they actually do mention the Statue of Liberty. So, they did. So Ghostbusters 2 did happen. But for some reason, they reverted everything back to 1984, which I, I don't because they had the darker uniforms. They had the the peace sign ghost logo. But now we're back to, you know, what I'm saying. Yeah, you're uh, right. They did bring that up. I you thought that was kind of weird. Now, it would have been interesting if they wanted to go down that road with the Ghost Corps actually have the color-coded outfits like they did in the real Ghostbusters. And the weird thing is the Egon stand-in, uh, whoever that guy's name was, the guy that worked at the Ghost Corps. Oh, yeah. That, I don't remember his name either. But, it's, it's, it's just, I don't remember their names. I don't remember his name. But he, the British guy that looked like Egon from the cartoons. Now, hear me out. <laughs> the one thing I liked about Ghostbusters 2016 was I liked Kate McKinnon as Holtzman. Uh, I like, I liked her. I think they need to tone her down a little bit, but I think I could have, I saw her as kind of the like spiritual successor to cartoon Egon. I'm like, I actually would have preferred them bringing 
Kate McKinnon in, like this universe's version of Holtzman. They would never in. do it. Because they, they would, would never get do so that. Much shit. Because that guy was so fucking boring. He was well, so just, fucking they could boring. They taken him a little more funny. It would have been better, I think. But yeah, he was really up his own ass. I was like, if you actually had a toned down version of Holtzman played by Kate McKinnon in this movie, working at the ghost. I Corps, wouldn't go Kate McKinnon because I think that's just not going to fly with people. Really? But well, I think, I think they could have done a to- toned okay, down I'm just version saying, with him. Well, yeah, because people would have been like, people would have been like, oh my God, they're bringing 2016 back We're in. boycotting, you know? But I'm I mean, just saying, I, I, that's I mean, what happened. just to tell you like my feelings, my feelings on this, I actually would have preferred Holtzman in that role because that guy was boring as fuck. They, they <laughs> he was so boring. And I don't even hate that they used Ghost Core. I, I think it could have been used really, really well. It doesn't make sense for them to have Ghost Core when they still got these these people from Oklahoma they putzing around been, the firehouse. They should have been combined into one. Yeah. Like. You, yeah. You have the firehouse. You got the guy. Like I said. If it were me, and it's not me, but if it were me, I'd be like, you bring the kids up to New York for some reason to meet the ghost corps. You leave everybody else in Oklahoma because they have no fucking purpose. And then you just bring the kids in and you've got a whole new cast of adult Ghostbusters that are funny. Think about the family drama. Leave the family drama out of it completely. There's no, we already did family drama in the last movie. We don't need more family drama. It's, it's done. It's over. Whatever. Leave them back in Oklahoma. And then um, that Nadim guy, he was funny. The firebender thing didn't really work for me, but make him a Ghostbuster because he was funny. He was. I, I think the firemaster thing was kind of interesting because you were bringing other culture type ideas into it. I like that. But I just. But they um, didn't explore it. They're just like, oh, no, bye. No, he didn't explore it. Suddenly he's good at it. Boom, the end. Because like, I thought they, they, they could have spent time exploring that instead of messing with Melody. Because they went, they went down this whole rabbit hole with the the Adventure Society. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be good because I, I I'm fascinated with that whole thing. Like, right. I thought they would do more than they didn't. Like, I thought maybe the Adventure Society. I actually thought where they were gonna go with it is like somehow the Adventure Society was maybe tied to, uh, I don't know the firehouse or the creation of the ghostbusters or something. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like significant that these guys were like precursors and now they didn't do any of that. Yeah. Shit. That's what I thought so too. I thought they, they were going to tie that in later. Yeah. And they like, didn't. And oh, then it was just like, like Pat and Oswald could go on about what a bunch of fascists they were. Yeah. Cause um, I, cause I was like, maybe the, maybe they, their meeting place was actually the, the old firehouse. They used to like, that would be kind of interesting. And then that ties in the, the library whole, or something. Or the, library. the library. You know what I'm saying? And it just, it was just like, there was no purpose other than to be like, oh yeah, a bunch of rich old white dudes just used to, you know. And they got killed. Colonialism. And, um, the only survivor and, was the fire master kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, they're setting it up to, for a premise, but they could have done more with it and tied it into the movie better. It's three anyway, different movies. We're going long on it's, this. It's three different movies. And That's the, I do it, agree with the critics on that. It's, yeah. it's too many. It feels like it's a couple different movies and, and they it needed better direction, I think. Like yeah, it needed to be streamlined more. <laughs> this is bad though. The ways to attempt to turn Ghostbusters into a legit franchise is your worst coworker. It's lazy, stupid, and does everything it can to look busy while not actually doing much of anything. That's it. It's a very busy movie. I don't think it's that to that level, but yeah. But like, I, I I don't hate it. I don't I don't love it, and I I I will. I don't know. I I can't. I I, I would say personally, I would say wait for streaming. Um, but that's my own personal opinion. I'm, I'm, I think I, also I'm very disappointed because I really was looking forward to this movie. I thought Afterlife was just kind of the, the stopgap between the old Ghostbusters and the new franchise they're building in. It just seems like they don't have a plan. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't think it's as bad as you do. I'd watch it again. But I do think that you have valid points. And it does feel like some things were shoved in there for no reason or things that could have been used for you know good ways we're not used to the level they should have been used if that yeah. makes sense anyway yeah. you might disagree and that's completely cool if you do because you know we, we, we don't agree i mean neon really hates it i i, did, I don't think i think it was a missed ever, opportunity I, I think it was a missed opportunity I and i think it's there's missed opportunities i think I it's gonna it's kill the franchise do. i don't think it's gonna do well and i think that this is it for ghostbusters well 2016 I. didn't kill it you know i just it's, it is better than 2016 yeah yeah i mean so there's that but, you know, I like it much better than you do, but I do, I'm not going to say it's not flawed because this de- I can definitely see what the critics are talking about. So we're going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.